Welcome back. I'll discuss sequence alignment in this video. As you are aware, deletion, insertion, and substitution can change a sequence. When comparing two DNA sequences, you might find that one of them has had a nucleotide deleted, added, or replaced. The same is true for RNA and protein molecules. In order to compare the two sequences, we must align them. Prior to learning how to align the sequences, we must first understand the various methods that can be used. There are typically two approaches. Local alignment is the first, and global alignment is the second. Start with local alignment first. The goal of local alignment is to align a section of one sequence with another. Here's an illustration of a longer sequence that is complemented by a shorter sequence. The regions of these two sequences that are most similar to one another are highlighted by their alignment. Finding motifs and highly similar regions is done using this alignment. One sequence is matched end to end with another sequence during global alignment. If you think of the shorter sequence as a rubber band, you would stretch it by adding gaps so that we could compare these two sequences by matching their ends. So, in conclusion, a pairwise sequence alignment can be of two different types. One of them is local, while the other is global. By introducing gaps, global alignment increases the number of sequence matches along the entire length of two sequences. It is used to identify conserved sequences. By excluding less similar regions, local alignment identifies the area of the sequences with the greatest degree of similarity. It is used to identify distant homology and discover related domains and motifs. Don't forget to subscribe for more informative videos and click the bell icon for the most recent ones.